Hello world. Um, today I think I'll have another try at the Nomad application, the little app on the iPad Pro. And um, well, let's just start right with uh, some kind of um, model I created earlier today. This is uh, just a sort of a human head. If you have a look at the geometry, this is very much high poly, um, but this is just for demonstration and purposes for the uh, drawing and layer um, features of this nice sculpting app. So there's on the upper right hand side uh, there's an icon um, where you can add layers and I'll add one layer now and everything I do from that time on will be stored in that layer and I'll be able to uh, switch it on and off um, depending on the needs of the uh, of the design. So now um, on the right, right hand side in the upper right corner um, there's a, a little icon to switch the display of the tools and um, I'll now choose the paint tool so I'm not changing the uh, the surface uh, itself, but simply the color. So and then um, there is this brush icon right here, uh, which opens the painting uh, dialog, and then we can choose a material and a color for the material. And right now, well, I think it should be skin-like. I haven't customized this, uh, so I'm just taking that material over here, and then the tone maybe something like that I don't know so all right now we can go and um, have a look at the brush itself okay that would be nice and uh, now I can go and paint this head and once you if you see right here it also changes it's not only color it also changes the material of the object where I um, put the, the Apple II pen right here. So okay, um, I would like to flood the whole surface with this uh, with the with a pen, um, and I think somewhere I might have seen the paint all right there. There it is. So kind of a bucket tool. Um, and now the whole surface is covered with this material and the uh, color. Quite nice. All right. So, and since we created an, an layer earlier, we can now activate and deactivate this uh, material or this um, the features we just added. I'll add another layer on top of that, and there I will use another material. Uh, let's have something like that for the eyeballs. Okay, it's much too reflective, but well, for um, trial purposes, I might choose this one. And now I'll paint the area where the eyes, the, the eyeballs will be. Now we see the reflection comes back over there. And uh, still, uh, maybe we need more geometry to have the a higher resolution over here. Something like that. Uh, it looks like a kind, different kind of, uh, what's luck in English? I don't know. So over there. And in between, let's add another layer. Right, I'll put the new layer, Whoop. this is this one, and layer 2, I'd like to put between layer 0 and layer 1, since I would like to add some change or some, some variation in the color of the skin, painting the tip of the nose and the ears and having it a bit r more reddish because of these uh, there's more blood flow or 
at least it's closer to the to the surface of the skin. Uh, this doesn't look so good. What's happening over there? I really don't want to uh, to remesh this. Dynamic topology. Okay, let's remove that. And now I think this it went went back. Okay. So all right now, now I can draw on top of the uh, of the first layer of color that I added there, and uh, this is also strange. See that white over there? This is this seems to be a bug. So um, when I switch to the in inverted mode of the of the color uh, tool, then there's some some white border shows up right here. That seems to be a bug. So if I reduce it to that, and then I switch to the additive mode again, then at least we can get rid of the of the white border here. Okay, not like that. Good, and then add some color to the lips, uh, whatever. Perhaps the outer part of the ears as well. And if that is too much, we can also reduce the opacity of the layer itself, pretty much like uh, we're used to this feature in Photoshop uh, over here. See? Okay. So now um, I'm going to add a bit of the of this color close to the eyelids. Maybe that was too. Where am I? Oh, it's there. Okay. Should be. Why? Why isn't that painting? There's no painting activity over here. Why aren't you painting? Hmm. Strange. Maybe another bug? I don't know. Hmm. Mysterious. Ah, no, I activated the eraser, huh? That. Yeah, that, that's it. Okay, I inadvertently uh, activated the eraser, so sorry. Okay, let's have another look, another go with that. That would be the inside of the eyelids, or the upper and lower end. Of course, this is all very, well, <laughs> uh, let's say, um, I'd like to duplicate. Ah, there. Yeah, okay. So, change the name of the layer. May I do this here? There? No? Anywhere? Maybe this? Uh, no? Okay, changing the name of the layer would also be interesting. I guess it will be possible. I just don't know how. And, um, well, let's have another layer of the more reflective material with some kind of bluish color simulating the iris of the character. Mm, maybe something like that. Okay. Uh, over here. Okay, this looks totally crappy. <laughs> Alright. Well I definitely need some more time with this app. Uh, what I found out, which is quite nicely um, is uh, that you can change the rotation mode um, between orbit, which just centers on the uh, on the pivot of the uh, of the uh, of the object, which is nice, but not what I really um, had in mind. And um, I actually contacted the uh, developer of the app 
and uh, he told me about the trackball feature over there. And so uh, using the trackball, you've got a similar feature to the turning, uh, through the canvas turning um, capability of um, several drawing apps like, for example, Procreate or um, Clip Studio Paint. And now I can turn it with two fingers on the, on the iPad, which um, helps if I do this with the left hand. And then with the right hand, I can just keep drawing. So okay, I just have to be to make sure that I'm not changing the light. Uh, with three three fingers on the on the iPad, I can uh, change the position of the lighting itself. So this is a bit yeah, just like that. Okay, uh, looks a bit like uh, some kind of uh, puppet. Well, in the end, it is some sort of puppet. I think this um, could be used as some kind of maquette. Well, given there's much more time invested into the uh, into the actual modeling and um, design of the uh, of the character. And now that I've got the, all these layers, I can play around. I think activate them and deactivate them. And if I um, activate the base layer, like now, I can change the uh, topology, the uh, not only the topology, the, um, the actual surface of the of the material uh, of the object. So let's try this out and see how um, this will react to another change, um, even though the color has already been applied on the surface of the of the object. Um, so what did I want to do? Uh, I've got a brush. Ah, yeah, right. Um, let's re-enable dynamic topo uh, topo topology. Yeah, right. So get some eyebrow. Uh, wrong direction. So get them out. Something like that. Some kind of It's weird. I mean, the the, <laughs> the surface properties are all very, uh, the shaders and, and materials are looking very realistic. And uh, the crappy design of mine <laughs> is a pretty, pretty stark contrast. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, let's get over here and have a look at the crease tool. Um, so we can add some depth to the uh, over here. This is. This is damaging the the color layer over here. Now we're having these these white uh, borders again. That's interesting. Now let's have a look at the uh, where was it? There it is. See, somehow the change in geometry influenced the um, the color over here. Strange. All right. Uh, let's go back to the base layer. Yeah. Maybe deepen the uh, the crease over here. This one, right? Now let's pull out some kind of throat on the back of the object. This would be the drag tool, I guess. I take now something like that. So it looks a bit creepy. It's maybe it's a bit <laughs> a bit clear what's happening over here. So the um, the geometry is actually um, changed, and the topology. See the the vertices that are added in real time, and this is pretty pretty fluent. I got to say, not that I've got that much uh, experience with sculpting apps, but this uh, it's, it's it's very fast. Feels good, very responsive. Must be a more elegant way to do this, I guess. So kind of Pinocchio over here. Ick. No, undo. So right there. And oh, 
or do we hmm. we could increase the size of the throat maybe with inflate hmm. well let's have a go at that increasing the size of the brush a bit well, it looks a bit like some kind of uh, very 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 bad disease this uh, this puppet having okay given that he's got no uh, no torso at all it might be not that bad and then let's have the smooth tool uh, so okay I'm trying that it really doesn't look so healthy over there so that's better Okay, now with the drag, I will take. Maybe I should in increase the the pull or the ah okay. The actual force of the tool. And th this is this is another strange thing over here. Do you see that? This this triangle there. How do I correct something like that? This is this is strange. Is there a smooth tool? Well, yeah, sort of. And the redoing it in that scale and that and then well that's gone okay well that seems to work that's a bit strange okay let's go over here try that one and uh, maybe I should just zoom out and then use the tool in that uh, yeah. Hmm. This the resolution is uh, varies, of course. And then, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, interesting. Yeah, I think I've got to spend a lot more time with this tool. God, yeah, yeah, yeah. This doesn't look good. Um, maybe try this. And pop it up. Shoot the do. So oh yeah, yeah, this is maybe a bit better. So weird back weird muscles on the back. And the front. Let's get the shoulders some more volume. And I could do it like that. And uh, well wild idea maybe I could just mask the upper part there's a masking feature over there and then I could go um, like this say paint all hmm. and I, s I don't see anything painted that's not so good let's remove the color and have the mask paint all clear why is this blue why is it blue? And there's another strange artifact over there. Can I fix this? Mm -hmm. I can. Okay. There also some some, some uh, renegade triangle over there, not fitting in with the rest. Good. Okay. So something like that, and then use the drag tool again. Must be an easier way to do this. I could use primitives. I tried this once or twice, but that also wasn't very. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well. So this is going. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we should go ahead and try different techniques to compose the body. Maybe I'll just um, I'll just take the um, the primitives over there and add them to the scene and then relocate them so they resemble uh, a human 
body. Uh, and then it's just, I could just merge them. Yeah. Okay, uh, the fun thing about the layers uh, I forgot to mention is um, they can also record or take uh, the layer, uh, the, the uh, topology or the geometry data. So I can go uh, there and though it makes not that much sense, add another layer and remove this one over here. So we we'll just see how this might look. And then I go ahead and just for demonstrational purposes, I will inflate somewhere here. So kind of horns. And this is all um, stored. The, the transformation I just did is uh, sort of uh, captured within layer 4. So uh, if I deactivate this, just like that, then um, it disappears. And so I can, this could be used for different um, poses, phases, something like that. Uh, changes you've got to switch between. That's quite useful. Well, I guess this will come in handy. So smoothing could be, uh, yeah, right. Maybe if I enlarge the area of effect and run that way, smooth the back part. Oh well. Okay. So. Now, yeah, I think that's, um, that's one way to work with this. And uh, I'll have another go at the masking. So this one, paint all. Why isn't he showing the mask? I don't get it. OK, let's use selection mask. Rectangle is already selected and L. Okay, that is unexpected. Why? Why is that causing the um, the mesh to disappear in that area? Weird. Okay, masking, masking, masking. Now I'm actually creating holes with a mask. Did I? Ah, right. Okay, that's the point. Uh, see in the in the um, lower part of the. Oh, okay. No, you can't see it because it's out of the uh, out of scope. There's a there's a feature uh, in the bottom um, bar where I could activate and deactivate the visibility of the masked area. So I accidentally um, checked that so that here. So that uh, the whole masked area disappeared. And now I can say, uh, I can just take the selection mask. Let's rotate this to a decent position. Uh, not that way, this way. So um, now I'll mask all that. And now I might be able to use the drag tool in order to just pull out the rest of the body. Oh, okay, there's a lot of broken geometry. <laughs> yes, this might not have been the best idea. Okay, return to the normal state. This way. Uh, did I? Did I? Ah, no, it's it's uh, it's active. Um, let's have a stronger force for the tool and a stronger effect. So. Okay. Ah, okay. Once I, I'm dragging the masked area around, that's that's not so good. So okay, avoid the masked area. This just doesn't look so. <laughs> I don't know. Well, <clears throat> so okay. Um, then masking, and we are clearing the mask. Well, it, uh, at least I'm trying to. And uh, then I'll try the mask again. Or maybe 
maybe I should just clear it. Paint all. Paint all. Hello. Why don't you? Hmm. That's strange. Hmm. Doesn't want to do it. Strange. Right. Invert. Invert is possible, but not paint all. So I could just go and clear it and then invert. So I've got the same effect. All right. Well, then have it your way. Okay. And uh, now I'm inverting the um, the pencil uh, like that. And I've got this part now affected by everything or by anything I choose over there. Just inflate this. Still looks, it doesn't look very healthy yet. <coughs> okay. And I'm going to drag this out to have get the length of, uh, oh no, I accidentally uh, hit the, the surface of the iPad with three fingers, so I turned the, the light source somewhere else. Eh, would you please come back? No, <laughs> where was it? Uh, uh, this is not recorded in the history. Mm. Okay. Well, so I could pull out the arms. Mm. Still doesn't really look the way um, it's supposed to do. Maybe if I smooth it out a bit. And then I would uh, clear the mask. Okay, I've got to reselect masking. And then say clear. All right. Now I can model the rest of it. Uh, all right. Smooth that out. Okay. Well, this really looks ridiculous. Okay. Um, so that's another trial at Nomad. I think the program is quite uh, useful, and I guess I'll need more time with it, but there will be some part in my workflow where I can actually use that, I guess. Um, yeah. All right. Um, thanks for your uh, attention, and yeah, see you next time. Bye.